Mr. Garage here. It is Friday and I am exhausted, but I have a really cool device over here and I wanted to tell you guys about it. So this is the Maker Hawk. That's the brand name. I guess there's quite a few different uh, knockoffs of it and maybe the Maker, Maker Hawk's a knockoff. I don't know. Anyway, there's quite a few versions of this, but this thing is awesome if you want to load test batteries and find out what the capacity is on your battery, which is why I bought it. Now, mine looks a little different than the models on Amazon and eBay and all the other places because I made a little laser cut chassis for it and combined it with a cheap low voltage cutoff. So I really have a nice little battery tool. Um, electronic load devices are very, very expensive if you buy a name brand. And this, uh, you can put together a low voltage cutoff and your battery load tester for like 60 bucks. And that is just amazing. So. I'm going to get to um, showing you guys a little bit more on this and we'll get started. Make this video short and sweet. I'm back. So we're going to kind of focus on the actual two little units themselves. So the way these units come is you have the MakerHawk electronic load device here and little measurement tool. And it's just a PCB with some little plastic feet. So it just sits on a desk. I thought that was kind of cheesy. Again, I made a chassis for it just to kind of combine it with a low voltage cutoff because you don't want this thing just continually draining batteries until they're completely dead. That's going to destroy your battery packs. So this little cheap low voltage cutoff works fine for, for, uh, what I need it to do. Now, I bought this device primarily to test um, some big wet cells and also some future lithium batteries I'm gonna buy for my travel trailer uh, for you know a solar setup that I've got. But um, I've also been kind of playing around testing some 18 volt Ryobi batteries I have and kind of you know figuring out those and where those are sitting. So I've got three of them that are super old and I've got this one that's virtually new, so I'll be testing that in a little bit. But yeah, let's go through some of the features um, on this little tester. It's it's pretty neat. So you got a lot of USB connections here, different types, mini, micro, uh, a USB C. You have a main input for power here. So this is what you'd plug into a battery pack or something else to to load test. Um, and you've got some other features that'll be covered by some other people. But the bottom line, what I want to get to is just the functionality and kind of cut right to the chase. Is it accurate? Yes, it's accurate. That's that's a good part. So this thing is accurate. Uh, especially for anything you would want to do. It, it It's pretty simple math when, you, when you're uh, trying to measure amp hours and watt hours, but this thing just kind of does it for you until it reaches a low voltage point or voltage cuts off. And then it just kind of freezes the display and it'll give you an amp hour readout, how much time it took to, re or to reach that measurement. And it'll show you your watt hours. So very cool device. Now, one thing that a lot of people are confused about online is it says in, in big print 20 amp discharger and um, or electronic load device well yes that, that's true but what you have to be very careful with is it's not 20 amps at every voltage so you have to do some simple math so this thing is rated for 150 watts and now you're just going to divide the capacity of this or the rating of this of 150 watts you're going to divide that that by your battery voltage that's going to give you your actual amperage it's capable of measuring now if you go over the amperage or the current draw um, that this thing's capable of discharging then it actually has a protection circuit and it kind of glitches out and it's actually preset right now for 185 watts it's not preset for the 150 watts that it's specified for so it's got a little bit of headroom but i wouldn't exceed that factory rating too much because this is a really cheap uh, computer heat sink and I'm just afraid it'll probably burn up the MOSFET or burn up the PCB on the bottom. So um, wouldn't exceed the rating, but anyways. Yeah, so low voltage cutoff. I'll show in a video in a minute of how to program this. But again, this thing is a cool little device. When the battery reaches just a certain point, it's just going to basically close or open the relay. Power is going to stop flowing from the two power wires or well really from one power wire going into the input of this device and it just stops the discharge off your battery pack so it doesn't kill it i don't really need to use um the low voltage disconnect on these ryobi batteries they have their own little bms in them so they'll just shut off uh, my previous packs were around really low 12.5 volts but it will shut off so uh that's pretty much it for little this little device uh I guess I can show you guys a few little things on screen, but it's got a few screen layouts if I can get the camera to focus on it. So let's see here. All right, so you got a couple different layouts. Again, it'll show you the watts being drawn, amp hours that it's um, counted up to, watt hours that it counts up to. You have your voltage and amperage draw that are again adjusted by these two little knobs. 
And then you have some other things like you have a backlight setting, um, 300 volts. I'm not sure why it's set for greater than 300 volts because I would never be testing that high, but I guess that's what they capped it at. Um, that's uh, less than, so that I believe is a low voltage alarm. It's got this little speaker on here, this little buzzer. So if you reach a certain voltage, the buzzer comes on. But again, this device, the MakerHawk device, does not have a low voltage cutoff. It just has an alarm. That's why we have a cutoff separate for, for bigger battery packs. But uh, that was just a screen in, in uh, Chinese. And here is just another version of the same screen. So you can see a lot of, a lot of different uh, measurements there. But this is pretty much the screen I use. It just gives me my battery voltage, the amperage draw, and then my counters for amp hours so I can test capacity. Because that's all I'm really trying to see is what is the capacity left on battery packs, whether it be a travel trailer or a drill battery, you know, whatever. And again, the cool part is this whole package was like $60 for the MakerHawk load, electronic load, and the little low voltage cutoff. It was very cheap. Um, these chassis, if anybody wants one, I can make them, I, I can sell them to you. I have a business, but, uh, that's not why I'm here. I'm more here because I'm really excited about this device. It's super cheap compared to a professional load device. And it's actually very, very accurate. I'm happy with it. So I'll come back here in just a second. And we'll go through kind of some of the settings or how to set up the low voltage disconnect that I also got off Amazon. They're cheap. And I'll kind of show you how that works. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I'll show you about this low voltage disconnect. Now, the cool thing about this disconnect, it's rated for 12 to 36 volts, but I actually tested it. I've got my big power supply here. And if you notice, my big power supply is at 9 volts on the output. And this guy is measuring 9 volts, so it's reasonably accurate. Um, I can turn this guy all the way down. And functionality wise, it's sub 7 volts is where everything still functions. That's about when it cuts off there because I programmed it that way. But um, so it functions below, but the cutoff function only functions to seven volts in the dot. Now the way you set this up, so I'm gonna crank this guy up to, let's just say 12 volts on my power supply, my adjustable supply. All right, so I'm at 12 volts on my adjustable. Screen's measuring 12 volts. And the way you set this little low voltage cutoff is, the left button is going to press your low voltage disconnect. You press and hold, that's going to set it. The right button sets the voltage spread in which the relay reactivates. So I'm going to press and hold this button. Now we're flashing. That is my low voltage disconnect um, voltage reading. So if I want to turn it up, let's say I want this to come up to, we want to disconnect. Oh, let's say I want it to disconnect at 10.6. We're gonna just gonna let it sit until it stops flashing. That's the low voltage disconnect point. Now the voltage spread for reactivation, if I press and hold this side, I'm at 0.5 volts right now. I can set that the same way, kind of toggling those up and down, but that's the setting in which the voltage will come back up. Um, or the, re I'm sorry, the relay will reclose. So we're set at 12 volts. So I'm gonna start lowering voltage down to my 10.6. And if you notice, there's a little red bright LED on the back side of this. And what that's indicating is that the relay has closed and, and uh, uh, it's able to flow through the device. Voltage is able to flow through and current. So we've got it set at 10.6. So there's my 10.6 volts. It doesn't cut off right at there. Oh, there it goes. Actually, it does. Okay, so 10.6 volts. Relay goes open and it cuts off power from going to my discharger. So that's exactly what I want it to do. Now the other setting that I talked about, the turn or the turn on setting or the, the voltage threshold in which it'll re reactivate the relay, we have to go 0.5 volts up. And that's exactly 0.5 volts up, and boom, we're closed again. So you can set that spread. I think the fault was around two volts. I've got it on 0.5 now. So that's how the low voltage cutoff works. Really cool little device. And uh, it just helps when you package it together as a measuring device, when you have a low voltage cutoff and you've got the measurement tool itself. All right, I'll be right back. We're going to plug in this battery, and I'll kind of show you this thing in action. Okay, so I have my battery pack hooked up. 
Uh, I've got the discharger on, it's reading 20.5 volts. My little voltage cutoff is reading 20.5 as well. This thing really isn't that accurate once you get a load on it. This thing's off about 200 millivolt or so. So um, just again, compensate for that when you're doing your testing. Just make sure you know what the voltage reads on this little guy. So anyways, we'll start the testing. So all you have to do is once your battery's hooked up and you wanna start load testing, is we're gonna turn the course knob first. Um, that's going to dial in the amperage draw on this. The fan's going to start up as it starts dissipating. And then again, if you wanted to really get into the details, we can turn our, our fine knob here and adjust it in, in kind of milliamps. So we're going to go ahead and adjust the big knob up. I don't have the right standoffs yet for this particular deal, so it's a little tall, so I can't really just turn the knob as one should. But our fan's blowing now. And we're going to keep on turning this guy up. I'm going to set it to my previous battery packs, about 7 amps. You see the voltage drop on the display because we're putting a load on the battery pack. So it's not just floating at voltage. So let's get this up. Come on. Yeah, close enough. Ah, wow, sweet. Dead on. So... As time passes, it's counting it up in seconds here. This is the amount of time for the test. And you're counting up your amp hours. So this is the important part. So this is going to tell you your capacity. Um, this tells you the power or wattage that we're dissipating, 134.92 watts. Again, this unit's rated for 150 watts. So I could get a little more out of it at this voltage, but I'm not going to. 7 amps is fine for this battery pack. It'll take at least 30 minutes of testing for this to completely dissipate this battery. And what I'm curious about is what this pack tests. Um, kind of will show you how accurate this is. So again, this is a very new Ryobi battery. The previous ones that I had that were, were pretty old packs. Let me kind of look over here, I can tell you. So my first pack that was exceptionally old, it was one of the first lithium Ryobi packs measured 3.43 amp hours. That's kind of the capacity that it had left after all these years. Now, two other packs that I bought the exact same time at Home Depot, newer style packs, both of those measured, one measured 3.63 amp hour and the other one 3.66 amp hour. So those are both pretty healthy. Um, they've definitely lost some life over the rated 4 amp hours. Uh, but let's see what this new pack does. I, I expect this one to be a lot closer to 4 than my packs because they've been used and abused. But let's see what this tests. And again, I'll be back uh, when this test is over and you can kind of see how accurate this is or I'll describe how accurate it is. I'll talk to you soon. I'm back. I just wanted to do a quick little um, follow-up. We're partway through our test. Actually, a good portion of the way through the test. We've been discharging for 26 minutes, and we measured about 3 amp hours. But actually, why I'm back is I wanted to talk about the accuracy of this little cheap Amazon low-voltage cutoff. So, voltage is feeding from the battery pack, going down into the low-voltage cutoff. On the other side of the low-voltage cutoff, on the output side, it trails around, goes through to my load device and the camera that will never focus. Anyways, all right, so I've got multimeter probes on it. But what I'm trying to show is my load device shows 16.3 volts right now, which is fairly accurate, about 100 millivolt off. Um, but my low voltage cutoff reads about 300, or actually about 200 millivolt higher, which again, I mentioned before. So you have to compensate for that. So if I was going to want the cutoff at 10.6 volts, I really need to set the low voltage cutoff to 10.8 for it to cut at the right moment. So um, again, this device is pretty accurate, the Maker Hawk, but the low voltage cutoff just kind of isn't once it has a load present. With no load, everything looks good. With load, again, it drops down. So I'm not sure really why it does that. Uh, it could be just really thin traces in spots or they've got the, the voltage circuit connected at kind of a funky spot. I don't know. I'm not going to troubleshoot it because honestly, I don't really care. It's close enough for the $11 I paid for it. And if you know how to compensate um, for the difference, then that's all you really have to do. It, it's your own personal cheap bench top tester. You're not doing this in a lab. So again, close enough. And the test is concluded. Now, this test surprised me. Why? my other batteries, my old batteries, are not as bad off as I saw, thought they were. They measured around 3.6 amp hours. This only a several month old or so 
much, much, much newer pack, which I expected to maybe read around four amp hours, which is what Ryobi rates it at, actually measured 3.66 amp hours. Um, that's good. That's good for me. That tells me my packs are actually really healthy and good shape. It's one of those things where you don't know until you measure. And that's why little tools like this to geeks like us are important because this tells me I actually have some healthy battery packs and my super old original one is starting to degrade a little bit at 3.4 amp hours. Um, but yeah, very cool little device. I highly recommend this thing. If you guys uh, like my video, subscribe. If you guys want a chassis, um, Again, I'm peddling my wares here, but whatever. If you guys want one or you want to make a device like this, I can definitely sell you a chassis. Just email me. But yeah, again, you don't know until you measure. I love this little device. Um, stuff is getting so cheap. I don't have to spend five, six, seven hundred dollars for a professional load tester. I did this for sixty dollars plus my little chassis, and it tells me everything I need to know about my battery pack. So, uh, thanks again for watching, and uh, hope to see you guys in the future commenting on my videos. Talk to you soon.